it started to make me realize that um, the purpose of living is that we should all help each other. If you are living for just yourself, you are going to stumble and hit something that's much greater than you as well. So we, we should all help each other with anything that we do in life as well. So I've done my personal development and I've grown from a boy to a man. Within 10 months, my life has changed right in front of me. And I see my dad's death as a blessing in disguise, whereas now I'm living to my full potential and I'm living 100% and I'm seeing the results. Ma, you're in good hands. Do not worry, I'm here. Just to give you a, back, a bit of a background, uh, I represent a $9 billion company called Herbalife. It's a nutrition and wellness company. I was one of the top distributors in Africa. Hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, sure. good times create weak men, yeah. and weak men create hard times. You are not the things that are outside of you, yeah. you are your word. I need to say what I mean and mean what I say. It's always about understanding you have to do a lot for a little, so you can do a little for a lot. No amount of money can buy health, yeah. you invest in it. You have to take care of the one place you live in, and that's your body. Yeah. Most Ladies and gents underestimate the importance of fitness. Now, when you have to go to the gym every day, you don't neglect your body every day. When you don't neglect your body every day, you got to eat right every day. When you eat right every day, your body becomes strong every day. Then the things that affect the people that are weaker than you yeah. makes you look stronger. But you're not, you're not stronger, yeah. you're just better. Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of No Chill Podcast, Rafit, where we give you a very great episodes. We feature people with great stories, Rafit, just to empower you. And don't forget that we are here to educate you, to entertain you, and to encourage you. In today's episode, Rafet, I feel honored to just sit with this gentleman here because his story is one of those greatest stories that if you are watching this, you will need to have a pen and paper because what you're going to learn about his life, his journey, is going to change your life. His name is JK, <laughs> Junior Koza. <laughs> I think Junior Koza is a, net, uh, it's a network marketer. He's also a fit premier. You know, he's, he's a businessman. And all of you guys, obviously, in Muzansi, you know him. On social media, he shows his body. And he encourages you guys to do well in terms of health. Junior, welcome to uh, the No Chill Podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations on your success in such a short period of time. Bruh, I don't think I'm, I'm successful. What do you mean? I'm still trying to, to build. But, I mean, people like you uh, are the people that are encouraging us to start doing these things. Man. I, I knew you. I know your story, and your story is one of the most powerful stories. Yeah. Uh, you come from a humble beginning. You know, um, you, you even said this, that you get into this network marketing because you promised your mom or your mom lost her house due to floods, and you told her, Mom, I'm going to take care of you from here now on. And also, you lost your father due to stage 4 cancer, and from there on, it motivated you to pay attention to your health. And today you are an influencer in this health industry. Tell me your convictions from your upbringing. You know, yeah. I believe that everyone, when they start, there has to be something that actually motivates them. Those two stories, your mom losing the house and you losing your father. Will you say that the stories that actually make you the person you are today? What I've realized in my life yeah. is that 
the most difficult situations in my life has been the best things that have ever happened to me. So yeah. depending on your mindset, you're either going to be a victor or you're going to be a victim. Yes. So in my situation, I needed to turn lemon into lemonade mm. because hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. So good times create weak men yes. and weak men create hard times. So the hard times then needed me to step up, turn from what we call a boy yeah. to a man. And um, most guys are going to become men when they realize that no one is going to come save them. And for me, God let me lose my dad. Yes. At least I had time to premeditate that he was going to go. Yeah. So I already started working then because he realized that I, I had finally found my purpose through my business. Yes. Yeah. So the, it's the best things. And the, just the two things that you're highlighting yeah. are nothing. There's been way more traumatic things that were happening before I even made that decision that I was going to retire my mom. The reason why I spoke with even a lot of conviction yeah. at my dad's funeral, life already happened to me even before I joined my opportunity. So I went from losing everything at home to having no choice but to make what I have work. Yes. So yes. I think it's those traumas and those experiences that make everyone's experience a bit different. And that's why my, my journey is a very unique one. Because, I mean, there's a video that you published and it's out there and it showed you telling your mom that, mom, I'm going to take care of you. Tell me, what was the mindset at that time when you were saying that thing? Because, hey amen, you even had the courage to record it to show that I'm going to come back to this video and said, this is what I did. And you did everything that you promised. You've been traveling, you are a top one percenter in network marketing you know you have reached uh, the president team status what was what, what were you thinking at that moment what was the mindset behind that conviction well you know as a man you're not your money you're not the things that are outside of you yeah. you are your word so i take words very seriously yeah. the moment someone speaks to me because of my attitude i take them seriously the moment when they show me with their actions that they're not going to do what they say they're going to do, their words hold no value. Mm -hmm. So I already know that I should not listen to what you say. I must just watch what you do. And if you don't do anything serious, how can I take you serious? So I already knew even before I had the money, I need to say what I mean and mean what I say. So already when my dad had stage four cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, weak kidneys, yeah. my mom had to come out of retirement. She was stressed with paying the hospital bills. I needed to get my business to a point where I could help my mom financially. So I needed to set my goals to take care of more than just myself. So even though I was making a lot of money, are people really planning for 10 times more than what they want? Because if you can plan for 10 times more, sometimes 10% of what you provide is a blessing in another person. So for me, when I first started my business, yes, I was making a couple of thousands by then. Yeah. But staying at my mom's house, it's a lot of money because I don't have responsibilities. So let's say I would even make myself 15, 20,000 rands. I'd give my mom half of the money because I didn't need much anyway. But it, I felt a lot of relief being able to be the one that helps my mom pay the hospital bills because she did a lot for me growing up. Damn. I mean, bro, that's integrity that you say. Like, you have to be a man of his words. And that's one of the most difficult things that, I mean, everyone, it's not even about the man, everyone, you know, we, we say things, but we don't really, you know, follow up and do those things. Why, why, why do you think it's like that, especially here in this country? Because I feel like if anyone can understand integrity, uh, they can do a lot, just like you. 100%. You know, I'm a very real person. I live in truth. And unfortunately, the truth usually hurts a lot of people's feelings. Yeah. But I, my life has been so traumatic that it was only the truth that could set me free anyway. So before I became successful, I needed to share my downs before the highs came. Because it's not the highs that made me successful. It's what I was doing when I was down and out that made me successful. Success is not your achievements. Yeah. It's what you do with what you have. Because if you can't do much with the little... You're only going to do worse with a lot. So mm -hmm. life is always about understanding. You have to do a lot for a little. So you can do a little for a lot. So in my situation, I would say I made slow money fast. Because with wealth creation, yeah. 
you have to make what we call one cent decisions. You must have the end in mind, reverse engineer. So what I did is that I'm gonna document my journey so that when I get to the top, no one can take it away from me yeah, yeah. because I don't have no rich dad, no rich parents. Yeah. I got no favors, no hustle. I mean, straight hustle, no handouts, no investors. The investment was in myself. And then the world started now showing me how much I've invested in myself because people only treat me how I treat myself. Yeah. So most people want to treat others the way that they want to be perceived. But yeah. if you respect yourself, people will respect you. Mm. So it just reflects, everything reflects. Yeah, I mean, like even with the energy that I've got, you know, it's like a, a lot of people can hear my story now. And, uh, you know, it was I've been to... Th through so much trauma, I couldn't afford to be depressed. You know, 50 cents once said, being depressed is actually a luxury. So with the flooded house, I had no clothes. I had to stay at my friend's place for two months. Insurances are always gonna screw you over. I had to choose between my mom getting the insurance money, which is obviously not gonna be what they promise you. They sell you a dream and do the opposite. Yeah. And that's why I don't like telling people um, I just say, just watch what I'm going to do. Because usually make promises, not when you're happy. Mm. Because when you feel good, you can only speak the right words. But in the bad times, you must speak about the things that you're going to achieve. Because there's a lot of things you're going to need to do internally to start getting those results externally. Right? So in my situation, I was willing to take the the decisions day by day, the criticism, the doubt, the hate, the betrayal, the people talking me out of doing my business, they didn't understand. They weren't there when the house got flooded. Yeah. They weren't there when I almost lost my life. They weren't there when I needed to go get stitches for my finger, when I needed to punch myself out of the flooded house. You know, only God could have saved me in that situation. I've been in so many situations where I fell asleep as a passenger in a car and I woke up in a scrapyard because the person driving was in an accident. But when I look at the accident and I look at the pictures, I'm not supposed to be here. So that's when I realized that the weapons shall form, but they won't prosper. Yeah. Don't trust people, trust God. Yeah. So if you're always going to trust God to take care of you, then you don't live in fear because fear is false evidence appearing real. Are you going to conform to it? Because the more, you're going to take on what you're scared of is the more you build courage, is the more you get what we call stoicism. Yeah. So most people don't know what it's like to have a flooded house, no clothes, no place to stay. My parents had me in their 40s. My mom is in retirement. My dad has stage 4 cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, weak kidneys. My mom couldn't afford to pay his hospital bills. Medical aids are exhausted. We have no car because the houses were flooded, the cars were written off. Then now I'm forced to join my business. Life forced me to join. Mm. When you still have a choice, you don't take it as seriously yeah. as when you have no choice. Yeah. So when I, by the time I joined, I needed to plan. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So my dad now fell into a coma. The time, um, yeah, well, let me just say, he had stage four cancer, but he couldn't start chemotherapy. He couldn't start chemotherapy because his kidneys were weak. So the doctor said he now needs to come to for chemotherapy at six o'clock in the morning till 12 to clean up his blood, to draw his blood pressure so that he can start his chemotherapy. Yeah. And it's going to cost this amount of money, this amount of money, this amount of money. So what my dad went through was the perfect example of what not to do with your health because no amount of money can mm -hmm. buy health. Yeah. You invest in it. You have to take care of the one place you live in and that's your body because yeah. you're a spiritual being. Yeah. So you, we are in the physical world right now, but spiritually, you are more powerful than you can ever imagine. So now I needed to plan to help my mom pay the hospital bills, but there was no car. Eventually, I needed to still use the products that I was using. And my plan was to prepare for a bodybuilding competition. Yeah. I was already in shape, I had, a, I had a six pack. I came from a competitive bodybuilding background. Yeah. I thought it was going to be easy because I had the six pack. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth is me being a person that goes to the gym just shows that I've got the skill sets of 
always doing what I don't want to do. So I brought myself into a business where if you do what you don't want to do, you can eventually be able to do what you want to do. Most people want the results. They don't want to give before they receive. Mm. I was willing to strip the weak version of me to overcome the insecurities, to become the confident person that I am, to know that the universe will always give you what you deserve if you're willing to go through a little bit of short-term humiliation. I wouldn't even call it that. Yeah. It's just the first test to see if you can't handle criticism. If you can't handle criticism, you can't handle stress. And if you can't handle stress, you can't handle success. Wow, man. I mean, that is, are you learning? You know, I'm hearing this, but obviously these are the things that came. This is the collection and allocation of the mindset in this business that you are in, right? Yeah. By my own understanding. When you started, obviously, it was just trauma, mostly, because you want to actually change your life and you want to just work hard. You yeah. Understand? But now, the, a lot of wisdom that you're sharing, we haven't been in 10 minutes in, but you have shared so much, you know. But guys, just to remind you, Rafael, this episode is sponsored by Okta. For everyone who wants to start trading, Okta is the great platform to start with. Go check it out. They have educational content there where you can just learn before you start trading and make sure that you trade responsibly, Buffett. Um, JK, yeah. you mentioned that you have a background of um, personal fitness and uh, obviously fitness modeling, right? Yeah. Those are the things. Do you think those things also contributed to your mindset in the beginning? Like if you reflect back and and look do you think being part of uh, the fitness modeling and also personal trainer impacted how you think today 100 yeah. percent. most ladies and gents underestimate the importance of fitness yeah. literally i can attest 99 percent of all my so-called success yeah. comes from my fitness because to build a strong body you need to build a strong mind I was once skinny and there's a certain body I wanted to create. There's a picture of mine when I was 15 years old and I already knew how I wanted to look by the time I was 25. Yeah. But I was willing to pay the 10 year price to still create that body. But what happens is when you become that fitness person, people around you start treating you the way you treat yourself. Mm. People start complimenting you. People start to want to know what are you doing? So now you're getting to a point where you are becoming the physical stature of what people usually respect because you can't buy a good body. Yeah, I mean, people can go for surgery, but that's a shortcut. Yeah. There's always delayed consequences with everything that you do. Of course, yeah. So us as gents, we don't have that option. <laughs> we have to build ourselves up. Yeah. So through building yourself up, you have to see how you want to look. You have to go to the gym. You have to eat right. So what happens is that now when you have to go to the gym every day, you don't neglect your body every day. When you don't neglect your body every day, you got to eat right every day. When you eat right every day, your body becomes strong every day. Then the things that affect the people that are weaker than you yeah. makes you look stronger. But you're not you're not stronger. Yeah. You're just better. You're better, yeah. So life is going to happen to everyone, whether you prepare or not. The question is, if you're prepared, were you preparing because if you're not, you're going to be repairing for the things that you're supposed to be preparing for. Yeah. You must always be an adult of your future, not a child of your past. Damn. Because what you say now, it, 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 it has to deal with the power of imagination. You have to see the body that you want first. How do you cultivate imagination? Because I feel like a lot of people, they use it in a very wrong way. They imagine the worst case scenarios, you know, and that's why they fall into depression. I kind of feel like depression is the result of just overthinking and overthinking the wrong things. You know, how did you cultivate that, that power of imagining yourself? And now you do the reverse engineering based on the picture in your mind. I came across this quote, whatever everyone else is doing, do the opposite. Yeah. So do what is right, not what is easy. It is hard to go to the gym. It's easy, actually. Because the things that are easy to do are easy not to do. So I needed to get comfortable with programming myself to make hard decisions early so that at a later stage, I can nothing will break 
my character. Yes. Because when you don't become disciplined, you can always track every area of your life through discipline. If you are not disciplined, you will not be able to take accountability on the things that you are not doing that are causing the problems that you have. Yeah. So the people, and I'm trying to say this in the most sincere way, yeah. where they are going through depression. But like I said, it's a luxury because if you are telling people you're depressed, you're already putting people in an emotional state to feel pity for you. Yes, yes. And if you're always going to have to tell people you're depressed for them to feel sorry for you, they, they will feel sorry for you, but it's not going to take the pain away. Yeah. You take the pain away by taking control of your life, yeah. by mastering yourself first. You know, I've been in so many situations where, you know, um, I know you've got a certain pattern of not sleeping yeah. because your mind is always working. But yeah. let me still answer that first question that you asked me. Yeah. Most people are focusing too much on what is going wrong. Yes. It just shows you how powerful the mind is. Because if you think everything's going wrong and your mind is proving it, it shows that you've programmed your mind to look mm. for what's wrong and you're not focusing on what's right. But if you progress, focus on focusing on what's right, then the mind will actually start making you feel the emotions that will get your physical body to move in the way that you need to be in order to become the person that gets the opposite result. So if you are depressed, if you are clinically depressed, mm -hmm. not just saying depressed, yeah. clinically depressed, I understand. Yeah. But most people are just making excuses. Yeah. Stress comes from not taking action over the things that you do have control over. Mm. No one is rich. No one is poor. We all have 24 hours. Of course, you'll be depressed if you do nothing with your time. Mm. Okay, so now, <laughs> so that the cause, I mean, if you just have to be 100% and be honest, depression is caused by being comfortable. Yeah. The truth. Yes, I the mean, truth. I'm, whether it's clinical or whatever, I mean, we're just facing the, the truth and the facts. So you must be not you must not be comfortable every day in your twenty four hours. That's what you're saying. That at least do something, whether it's your body, your finance, everything that is around you. Pay attention to your problems. Don't run away from them. That's what I understand. The thing is, when you're going through hard times, sometimes you go through hard times. You forget that good times are coming. And when you're going through good times, you forget that hard times are coming. Mm -hmm. So most people don't realize that this is just a test of character currently at the moment. Mm -hmm. God wants to bless you, man. But he has to test you before he gives you that blessing. Because if you can't handle it right now in this situation, how can he elevate you? Mm -hmm. If he elevates you, he's going to promote you not overcoming. Unfortunately, it's not our fault the world is the way it is. Yes. We, if we always want to blame the higher power, why things are not going right and all of that, that's not how he works. He can only give you tools. He can't give you the answer. As you search, so shall you find. Yes. You're going to want to have a cake. You say, God, please give me a cake. But God is only going to give you the ingredients. He'll give you the sugar. He'll give you the flour. He'll give you the eggs. Mm. But God, I didn't wish for this. Like, no, I want you to have the tools to know how to make your own cake. Yes. Because if I give you the cake and you don't know how, how are you going to teach the next person? Yes. How are you going to improve humanity? Yes. Because maybe that's your gift. Maybe you need to know how to build things. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. <laughs> how do you cultivate discipline, man? I want to go to the gym. Um, I have a desire, you know. Uh, I see, you know, it's good. I understand that it's good, but the discipline and to keep going, to build that muscle. How do I do it? Is there any system or procedure or rituals that I can follow to just develop that habit? Yeah, I mean, number one, it first starts with planning. Yeah. Number one, to basically speed up all success, plan. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And then every single day, you take the most important things that you must do first. Get the hardest things out the way first. Start the day with the hardest things first and end with the easiest things. So for me, mm. like I said, it's easy for me to go to the gym yeah. because in my 
formative phase of building habits, I programmed myself to go to the gym early. And then there's a domino effect that actually happens afterwards. Yeah. Because now you start planning the meals. You know, you're going to have to start planning the clothes that you wear because yeah. your clothes fit differently. So everything just changes all around that gym kind of like philosophy, you know. Yeah. In the bigger issues that we have in the world today, uh, a lot of people are easy to control if they don't build the strong bodies that they need. You know, there's a lot of, God forbid, yeah. but a lot of people are scared of crime rates. A lot of people are scared of being robbed, all those things. I mean, the truth is, these things happen in the world. Yes. But I never see a guy that's in shape getting robbed. There's a certain way that person walks with confidence. Predators look for prey. Mm. And if they sense that you are weak, they can prey upon you. Mm. 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 So that's why, as a man, it is your biggest responsibility to become as strong as you can mentally, physically, and emotionally. Because sooner or later, you're going to have to be a provider and a protector of your family and humanity. So it's much bigger than all of us. And if all of us can work on doing the opposite of what we are currently doing, if it's negative, we can have the opposite of what we are currently experiencing. You mentioned that, I mean, you can't change the world before you change yourself. Yeah. So it has to start with you. Yeah. And there are many people who are trying to change the world out here. <laughs> with, yeah. Without good in shape, good in health, you know, they're doing everything. Yeah. Would you say changing yourself first reflects everything else you do? Like yeah. your business? Yeah. The success of your business? Yeah. How you, you become successful in everything that you do? Let's track it back to the discipline that you're speaking about. Yeah. Because I was disciplined with fitness, yes. I then started my Facebook after all my friends. Yeah. But because I go to the gym every day, I've got content every day. I'm progressing every day. Yeah. I'm posting every day. Mm. So while I'm taking action, they are watching me. Yes. They watch me post the same pictures all the time, but I'm getting better. Yes. And as I get better, my following starts growing. Yes. So now I'm starting to attract more people. Yes. So now I'm building a network. Sure. And now I'm building a brand. So you don't even realize how important it is to be consistent in one thing because it affects everything else. Yes. So as a result now, then it's like, okay, let me start this Twitter thing. Yes. I'm like, the same consistency I have with the gym, I'll tweet every day. Yeah. My followers are going up. Until I realize this is not where I want to build my brand. Yeah. There's just too many people that are internet type guys yes. that can just type. But when people see me face to face, they don't treat me the way they type. Yeah. That's, why, that's why it's like... People say, Junior, you got so many haters. What, 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 what. That's not what I'm experiencing in real life. <laughs> sure. Maybe people hate me on social media. Yeah. But face to face, I don't have enemies. Sure. Unless the people are jealous of me. Yes. You get what I'm course. saying? Yeah. And stuff now. So I realized I couldn't build my brand there. Then I started Instagram. Yes. Same thing. But the, the relationships you get to build, the people that want to meet you at the gym, the people that want you to train them. Now it then took me to personal training. Now, I failed my trick, by the way, okay. with distinctions. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you want me to fail for you, give me the your paper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Right? <laughs> but funny enough, you know, while I was still at school, I used to sell sweets. And they were stopping me from selling sweets. So I was questioning everything. Because I was making a living for myself during yeah. that time. What, what's, the, what's wrong? Yeah. What's so, wrong actually by making yourself better and try to eat? And while I was selling sweets, guess what? I was building relationships around everyone around school. Yeah. And I was still elected to become a prefect, not necessarily for my academics, sure. but because I'm very good with people, mm. I could get all the guys that are not disciplined, that weren't going to class, to go to class. Because all the nerds yeah. that knew all the answers in school cannot go to the gangsters and tell them to go to class. Mm. So there's that masculine imperative that you need to have in yourself where as, my, as long as you're still smart without being strong, from a man-to-man -man perspective, how do I say this? Mark Zuckerberg yeah. is not going to tell me what to do until he goes to the gym, even though he's got all the billions. Sure. Because the money is not making him powerful. It's just exposing more of who he is until he realized that, no, man, I need to get into shape. Now he's the first billionaire that I know with a six-pack. Mm. 
You get what I'm saying? Sure. And now everyone speaks about him differently. He's now attached fitness to his brand. They're like, Mark Zuckerberg can get into shape. He's got all the money in the world and he gets into shape. You know what I'm saying? So the foundation here is you. I mean, the way I'm understanding it, you and your health, focusing on you and, and all this. I mean, we, today we're talking about you, you know, top 1%, you know, all these achievements. But we, we, we tend to forget or overlook the foundation. Yeah. What did he do to get there? Yeah. You know? And I came to you, I was like, bruh, I, I want to be part of the, your network because obviously I saw results. I, I, I didn't see your, your money or anything, you know? I saw the results, the mindset, you know, the things that you say. I, was like, oh, man, I can grow if I associate myself with this guy. All along your journey, man, how did you cultivate this mindset that you have today? What, what, what were you doing? You know, I mean, I don't think you were born like this. Obviously, there were lessons that you got through tough times and all those things. But where, what, what are other ways or strategies or things that you were doing to cultivate or to build your mindset? You know, funny enough, even while I was still in primary school, yeah. my mom couldn't tell me what time to come home. I don't know, it's just something as a guy. Yeah. If they tell you to come home early, you're not going to come home early. <laughs> you, so I, yeah. I, I'd go home late, but I would either be playing soccer with the gents, mm. I would do sports, sure. I would exercise. But it's more about stretching yourself mentally, physically. And uh, then my leftover energy, I would give it to books and all of that at yeah. school. But not that I was rebellious to my mom. I've always treated my mom well and yeah. I've always respected her because she's done a lot for me. Sure. Right? Sure. But I started doing a lot of things earlier than everyone else. I was going home late. Um, I built so many different relationships. And I'm very adaptable. Sure. Because when you're young, you're still experimenting. Sure. So I've chilled with so many different people from different demographics. Sure. So I would still walk home and then I would still jog to Alex to go chill with the gents. Then I had neighbors that came in, uh, people of different color of skin, mm -hmm. directly, honestly speaking, colored people. Yeah. And they had this more dangerous thing about them. Yes. And I chilled with them a lot. And then I'm like, I need to develop the capacity to be dangerous, but be able to control myself. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, but now when you're young, you can't control your emotions. So these are the things that you must master while you're still young. Because if you can't control your emotions, you can't control anything. So as I became that physically strong version of myself, yeah. and now I was in situations where, because I spend a lot of time driving my dad's car and Alex driving, that's the best driving school you'll ever get. Go drive in Alex. That should be your, <laughs> where you should <laughs> get your, 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 like, dri your driver's test. Sure. The, 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 that is the best coaching you'll ever get. But I got myself into so many situations where all the taxi drivers were scared of me. But with the way that industry works, you mess with the wrong person, you can end your life. So, sure. And I kept on asking myself, if every taxi driver is going to piss me off and I get out the car and I want to exert my physical strength on them. Sometimes when a person is scared and they do self-defense, sometimes they can just pull out something and then poof. Yeah, you go. So you then start developing a conscious and stuff now over time. So can you see when you're young, you need to slay a lot of your demons because you have to become a complete human being. They don't teach you that at school. Life is all about personal development. So the answer that I got from you is personal development. The mindset, this mindset is the result of personal development. What is personal development? Personal development is working on you becoming the best version of yourself. We're in a society now where everyone sounds inspirational. But nowadays, it's like everyone sounds the same. It's the same conversations everywhere. Everyone's posting the same pictures. That personal development is not about sounding nice. It's about being. You must be the person that you say that you are. Not say you are the person that you are. Mm -hmm. Because what you do must match what you say. Sure. The moment you are always lying about what you're saying. I don't care what you do. 
Mm. But the truth is, I care about more about what you do because it tells me where you are going. Because I know what I was doing from a foundational standpoint to know that no one can distract me from my goals because I'm staying core to my foundation. People look at Santon, they like the nice building, mm. but the most important thing about that building is the foundation what no one sees. Mm. 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 So even in life, sometimes you think that life is bearing you down underground, but depending on how you think, yeah. you're actually being planted. And sometimes people don't need to see you growing, but every day you can just water the soil. The seed is underneath. Sure. Then the seed becomes a plant. Then the plant becomes a tree. Then the tree creates fruits. Then the fruits then plant other trees. Then you create a garden. It's a process. You don't start with the end result. You start with the process. So I grew up ag agriculturally, mm. right? Hey, hey, my English is improving. You know what I'm saying? For someone that failed. You know I what mean, I'm saying? You know, right? And it's personal development. It's personal development. You know, a lot of people, when I tell them I failed matric, mm. they don't believe. They're like, but you sound so... I'm like, if you've spoken to the amount of people I've spoken to, if you've done the research I've done, if you've avoided the things I've avoided, I'm grateful that I failed matric because now I didn't have to go to school for my, in my situation. Yes. Because school was not working for me because they were already stopping me from doing what I wanted when I was in school. I'm like, but you're already getting the money from my uncle that's paying the school fees. Yeah. But at school, when I want to sell, you don't want me to sell. What do you guys want me to do here? Because are we not learning how to make money? So yeah. I question everything. Look, to someone that's at school right now, they're going to take offense to this. Yes. Because sometimes even when there's a short clip, they're going to take it out of context. Sure. If you don't understand where I came from, you won't understand what I'm speaking about now because I can't speak about my whole life in a short period. Exactly. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that I'm grateful for school, for the relationships I built. Yeah. Not necessarily what I learned in school from an academic standpoint. But I'm at a point in my life now where my creativity and my ability to learn how to sell. I found myself in a business model where with everything that I learned about promoting for my dad, building my brand, social media, becoming a fitness brand, being labeled as a personal trainer, people wanting me to train them, then collaborating with products that help you with nutrition. Yes. It's everything adding on to everything else that completes that whole total brand. Sure. Now you can use the products to help people make up for what they're not getting in their regular diets because no one eats perfectly. Because yeah. now you need to clean the inside first through nutrition. You can't out-exercise a bad diet. So now, over time, what I'm learning in business, now I became obsessed with learning what I wanted to learn, not what they're forcing me to learn. But with where I'm at in my business, I need people that went to school to learn the things that I wasn't learning at school. Because I'm also illiterate with what they are literate at, and they are literate with what I'm literate at. Right. Everything's always opposites. So we always need everyone in all industries. Not everyone is going to be an entrepreneur. Obviously, you, you yeah. get what I'm saying? Sure. So my mom was a nurse. Yeah. If my mom did not, she, she made the most out of the opportunities that she had. My dad was a firefighter. Yeah. My mom was a nurse. And all they could do is work and give me an opportunity to go to school because we had an opportunity to then venture into more careers. Yeah. But then now with more careers, too many people have too many options. When you've got too many options, you end up not making a proper decision. Yeah. So me failing school, I had no choice but to make whatever else I do work. Yes. And the more choices you don't have is the more you're actually going to do more. You don't need more of anything. Sure. You actually need less. Less is more. Mm. Mm. Less is more. What, what do you mean? I, I want to understand that deeply. Right now, a lot of people are attached to things outside of them. They want to define themselves with materialistic things, the houses, the cars, yes, yes. all of those things. But those things end up owning you if you're working for things that were made by a man. It's not even made by, by God. Yes, sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So when you attach your worth, it's like people say, no, someone must take me seriously because I'm driving this car. People respect the car, not the person. Yes. It's been the biggest misconception. For me... Even before I got the cars, people respected me. So it was not about things. The cars were just a byproduct 
because I respect myself. So you get what I'm saying? And it's convenient also. Hundred percent. Yeah. But the cars were goals that I also had for the phase that I was at in my life. Because already in my twenties, I then decided that I'm not gonna date until my life is stable. Tell me about that. It's very challenging, man, not to date. Uh, <laughs> you know, how did you manage to do that, bro? I mean, sometimes, ish, bro, I honestly feel like men are very weak when it comes to dating and even women in, gen- yeah. in general. How did you, how did you do it to date, to not date for, for until you become financially okay? What was the, even the motive? So the most important thing, number one, is because I don't come from a wealthy family. Sure. Number two is that my uncle went to exile. Yeah. My dad could have went with my uncle to exile because yeah. my uncle was a freedom fighter. Mm. So he was fighting in Angola, all these other countries when they were trying to colonize the countries. Yeah. And he was also fighting for South Africa. My dad decided to stay and take care of the family. So my dad was, he had the core values of keeping a family stable. And then my uncle, when he came back from exile, because my family actually thought he was dead, but eventually he came back to the country and um, he didn't want to get into politics, but he was reading so many books where he got into the private sector and business. So I then saw my uncle who had all the materialistic things that I wanted in life. And then I had my dad who is the most authentic person that he is. He just spoke his mind. Sure. But then now, having the best of both worlds, you come from Alex, sometimes on the weekends, you go chill with your rich cousins. You know, you're on a flight for the first time. Your uncle is opening the world to you. Your mind changes. Sure. So then I started seeing what kind of life I actually want from a financial standpoint, but what family I want to build. Mm. So my uncle was paying my school fees. My parents couldn't afford to take care. He actually took my entire family through school. Mm. My sisters yeah. and myself. So I was grateful for him yeah. for paying the school fees because also when my dad was sick, he was paying most of the bills. Sure. So now I see the importance of being a man that can provide financially. Sure. But my uncle was disciplined physically first. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Sure. So now... I was inspired by my uncle and then my dad, I realized with the way he was, he didn't have to pretend to be someone else to keep the family intact. My mom loved him for who he is. Mm. So he didn't have to pretend to be who he is not. Sure. So my dad was supported throughout. So I saw my mom support my dad through thick and thin. Mm. My mom supported me through thick and thin. Mm. My mom never judged me. Mm. She let me make my mistakes. She let me learn. It was painful for her. But look how big of a blessing it is now Today. because I was watching everything. Sure. So now, obviously, as a guy, to mm. answer your question, mm. weak for girls, all of these things. Sure. I started working out, funny enough, early where my guy friends in primary school, they were all chasing all the girls, but it didn't feel natural to me. Yeah. It just felt weird because I didn't see my dad do it. I didn't see my uncle do it. So I have no model of them chasing women. You you get what I'm saying? it was not a thing for you. It was not a thing. All I just knew, my dad had a deep voice. Everyone respected him. He had the family intact. Mm. My uncle came from exile. He he had the finances. Everyone respected him. So I think us as the Kosa tribes, we, we are Tsonga. There's just something that we... We just discuss as men mm. about being a man. So I realized that I need to build the strong body. I built the strong body. People started respecting me. Then when I started listening to my friends, no, if you're on a date to go, go buy this PS chocolate, the yes or no one. Yeah. I don't know. I forgot what it was. I yeah. think it was in, in primary school. Sure. So it was my first Valentine. I gave her that chocolate. Yes or no. She mm. ate it. She didn't give me an answer. <laughs> but yeah. it didn't break my heart. Sure. And stuff. It was just weird. It's like, does it mean that I must just always get something and give someone yes. for them to validate me sure. and stuff now? So for me, it always just felt wrong. 
sure. and stuff. And I'm like, hey, my friends are giving me bad advice, man, mm. and stuff now, mm. you know? So <laughs> now in high school, sure. uh, I started fitness. Mm. Now I realize that eh, a lot of girls are always coming to me. Mm. But, but it's because I love myself. So, I then was in a situation where I realized that I don't have to copy to anyone. You can just focus on you and everything will flow to you. Everywhere I went, somehow people knew me. People were talking about me in this other school, this other school, this, this guy, Junior Cosa, six pack legs. Yeah. What the, what the, so, it was more like people just treated me how I was treating myself. I'm only saying that now through self realization, not, yeah. not when I was going through it. Yes. True. But I was taking care of myself back then, you know, we used to build networks, we used to party. I did all these things early. Mm. Started a music group in high school. I was once a producer, used to have a crew, we used to wear the same uh, clothes. Yeah. So we were in the music industry early. So the fame came early out of my system. All these things, they came out of my system early. So a lot of people can't handle fame, they can't handle all these things. So that's when I realized that, hey, Sometimes people need to handle the little attention that they get before they get a lot because yeah. otherwise it's going to make them think that they're special when they're not. Sure. We're all just normal human beings. No one's special, no one's rich, no one's, no one's above God. Sure. No one's got superpowers. God gave us all the same abilities. You got to work on them. That's all. Man, you, you, you got into the network marketing space now, you mm. know, um, and you achieved top 1% in the space of three years, five months. Yeah. Usually it takes people 10 years to get there. Or 35. Damn. Yeah. Minimum 10. Yeah. What did you do differently? Planning. Personal development. Having skills before I joined the business. I had the ability to sell. I knew how to talk to people. I respected myself. I knew how to treat people. And that's what I brought into the business. So it was a lot easier because most people that have never started a business, most people that have never learned how to sell, most people that have never been to the gym, most people that have never been disciplined cannot expect to get the same results as the person that did things long before they did. We all have the same 24 hours. But while you are sleeping, I was gymming. While you are partying, I was working. Right? Mm. When you were studying in varsity, you had all the freedom. And I had to stay at home because I couldn't have enough money to move out. I was trying to find out other hustles yeah. and stuff now. So I found the opportunity that needs you to be the right person to make the opportunity work. Because I made everything that I focused on work. I made gym work because I worked. So you were doing, others were actually just reading and theory, theory we were applying. So now I want to understand especially when it comes to the network marketing space. Yeah. Do you, can you read yourself in, in this business or it, it, it has to do with application experience, doing, trying and failing? Because there are people right now who want to join, but you know, they, they, they're thinking, okay, ah, you know what, ah, this thing is easy. That mis misconception also. What are the requirements, the, the level, the minimum level of requirements to actually enter this business and be successful. Having the right mindset, being coachable, and understanding that anything worth having in life is not going to come easy. And even if it's not network marketing, it's still not going to be easy. This yeah. podcast I know is not easy. Sure. You know, I think about starting my own. Yes. I overthink it. Yeah. So you didn't get your by luck. But it's only people that have done things that respect people that are trying things more than the ones that are reading about it. Sure. Did you, what has been more important? Reading your learner's test or your driver's test? Obviously driving. So driving, driving is more important than knowing what you've read. Yeah. So a lot of people walk around, I've read this book. I've read my learners. That means I know how to drive. But when you're given the chance to drive, you can't drive. I've read about business. I want to start a business. Oh, you can't say business. You can't say I'm wrong about this. I read all about this at school. But you have no business. You've got no actual results. 
So people are doing everything the wrong way around. You learn more from doing than reading. Mm. You do school gives you a lesson, then they give you a test. Business gives you a test so that you learn the lesson mm. because you must work to learn, not work to earn because it's everything that you learn that will determine what you earn. So this school system is the other way around. Life is the other way around. It's not even just school. There's a holistic approach to the system that we live in. How should we live? Your best authentic self. How do you get to that level? I kind of feel like if then now a lot of people are not living authentically, there's something wrong. Then what is the wrong and how do you correct it? Most people are not working on developing themselves to become complete human beings. Working on their physical, mental, emotional, financial, and relational. You work on all those areas. You become complete then you can start helping other people. So I've always had the right mentors because I had a complete father. I had a complete rich dad, my uncle. They were the cream of the top. So I studied the top, not the in-between, and I followed at the top and I got different results. So if anything in life, most people are studying the wrong mentors. I don't take advice from anyone. I really don't. I'm very stubborn. I'll listen to you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but doesn't mean I'm going to... Yeah, so... And that's the most important thing because you're going to learn more from listening sure. because you... Remember, you've got two ears and one mouth for a reason so that you listen twice as much as you speak. Yeah. I may be speaking a lot on this podcast, but you are enabling these answers because you are a good podcaster. Yeah. You can't have a good podcast with bad questions. Sure. This is not your show for you to speak mm -hmm. it's for you to listen, to listen. Yeah. so most people and this is also uh, my mistake sure. i gave everyone all the the answers that took me a while to get right and they didn't have to go through anything so oh. they, they receive the answer without the go through that actually makes them become stronger to actually understand me so everyone can say, I know what Junior knows, but you know, you have not overcome what I've overcome. Yes. A lot of people say what I say, but they can't do what I do. It's just theory now. It's just theory now. I've got, you know, I always preached in my 20s. Guys, stay single, yeah. sacrifice your four or five sure. until you get the four pipes. Hey. It's a quote that I, I created myself. That's, that's dope. I, I said <laughs> to gents, if you're sure. not making 100,000 rands a month, you can't afford a girlfriend. And, 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 I was, and, and, and I was being generous eh? Is it? by saying that. And they think that I'm making this thing up. Of course, I'm a student to the right mentors. So I'm passing on the message. But now, people, they don't want to internalize what I'm saying. Mm. They want to start with everything at the beginning, but they're not complete. And they have no idea that time is eating your life away. You're going to put yourself under a lot of debt. You're not going to build your body strong. You're not eating right. All those things are going to catch up to you later. Life, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to spend half of their life realizing that life is a do-it-yourself project. Yeah. So your, the first half of your life will determine the second half. If you waste the first half, you'll be punished in the second half. <laughs> For things to change, you have to change. Mm. For things to get better, you have to get better. Don't wish things that were easier. You must wish that you were better at handling the situation. Can you handle losing your dad the way I did? Can you be the strongest one in your family? All the people that I counted on to be strong all cried and I needed to stay strong. At the scariest day of my life. And at my dad's funeral, because everyone knew him, I knew that some people were coming to celebrate my dad's death. Because people are jealous of other people. So I needed to be that strong guy yeah. to make that statement that no one should underestimate the Kaza family. And I'm going to achieve certain goals. And I achieved those goals. And now everyone respects me. Damn. Because I said I'm going to do what I'm going to do. 
and everything else is just self-evident. I don't have to fake it. I mean, you, you, you document, you love documenting. I, I, I saw when I was doing my research, showing videos of cults in 2017, showing all these things, and you, you were just intentionally doing it. And I was like, okay, this guy, so he tells himself that this is what I'm going to do. Tell me, how do you build the willpower, man? Because many, I mean, I don't even think many people know about willpower. And it's one of the most powerful things that if you master, your life is going to change. What is willpower? How do you, how do you build it and, and, and just control it and, and manage it to change your life? Your willpower gets tested every day. Are you going to do the little things? Because if you can't do the little things, you can't develop all power. You become what you conform to. Do you conform to going to the gym to build a stronger body? Or do you conform to postponing that you should go to the gym and develop a weaker body? And even if it doesn't become weaker, it's weaker compared to the one that's becoming stronger. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you start stacking up those little ones, I'm going to eat this because I said I'm going to eat this. I'm going to read this because I said I'm going to read this. I'm going to go to the gym. Then you start building confidence. And no one can actually take that away from you when you are doing what you're saying you're going to do. And that's actually what builds your willpower. And you kill your willpower every time you've got a decision and you're not making it. You choose to do everything as a choice. Your life is a delayed consequence or is a consequence of the accumulation of all your decisions. The one cent decisions compounded every day for 30 days can bring you millions. But most people can't even complete a 90 day game plan. I've completed so many 90 day game plans. I've been to the gym 250 times in 90 days before just to test what I could do. No one has ever done that. I've gymed once in 90 days more than most people are gonna do in five years. So you compress time. How many people did I meet in those 250 sessions? Training at 4 o'clock in the morning, training at 10 o'clock in the morning, training at 7 o'clock at night. You're still posting on social media. You're promoting your business. Your body's becoming stronger. You're building a bigger network. You're getting customers every day. You're making money every day. You get to save, to invest. Right? You build your credit. Yeah. You build your credit. You become a partner with the bank. The bank then can see with your credit that you are a responsible person. I don't have to walk in the bank. I can just call my banker and say, give me X and so amount. Sure. Within a day, I've already got the money in my account. Why? Because my bank statement speaks for me. Sure. I don't have to prove it. The bank has already got systems to see what you do with your life, where you spend your money. The bank will only give you according to what you do with your money. If they are seeing that you're buying alcohol only, if they're seeing that you're only getting paid once a month, they're not going to give you the amount of money. If they see money is going into your account every day, if they are seeing that you're traveling, if they are seeing that you're spending a lot of petrol, you then start getting benefits because that's how the economy works. Money is energy. It has to be used. So, so it, it's transferred. Money is energy. The pieces of paper in your pocket right now or in your wallet yeah. is not money. It is an idea. Most people don't understand that. It's your attitude towards money, not the money. Yeah. The, most, the problem is I've done this exercise with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. There's one time, I'm even going to speak about a lower amount. I needed to take out 5,000 rands. Sure. And then I'm speaking to someone. I'm like, this is a thousand rand. What do you think of? Just by showing them the thousand rand, they're already telling me what they think of. Airtime. What the, the, the. Mm. So the money actually tells me what you are thinking. I'm like, okay, three thousand. I know I'm gonna send my girlfriend three hundred there. I'm probably gonna buy myself a pair of shoes there. Mm -hmm. Five thousand. I know I'm gonna go on a date there. What not? I'm like. With the little bit of money that I'm speaking to you right now, I can already see that money is not the problem. It's what you're thinking about before you get the money. Mm -hmm. You've already spent the money before it even hits your account. Eesh. And because of that, we can already tell what's going to happen with the 100,000 rand. So, 
So, so it's the person you, you need to become yeah. to make the 100,000 rands that makes you realize that you can afford a girlfriend through who you became, not the money you made. I hope people are understanding this because I might be understanding me, right? I think I'm, I'm being a bit too deep, but the truth is, this is why people don't feel uncomfortable around me. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I hope they're understanding because if they understand this, everything will change. It's the understanding that I'm, I'm just hoping, you know, and I, let's just hope for them so that we can leave it. Let's hope they understand it because people are, they have money, bro. Money comes in. Like, I mean, it, that is not a problem. But they don't even know where it goes. Yeah. The same way as if you can't take accountability. When I get out of shape, I know when I started, when I stopped going to the gym. I can track it back to what I stopped doing. Mm. So if people are not tracking where they are putting their money, that's exactly why you've got a money problem. It's a you problem, not a money problem. Yes. Money has been printed every day. There's no shortage of money. There's a shortage of resourcefulness. You must become the person that attracts people because money passes through people. It's energy. Sure. It's energy. That's what most people don't understand. It's not the money that makes you special. It's not the money that makes you special. Do you have willpower, number one? I remember when I was in hospital, I was still, I remember you were speaking about this earlier. Yeah. I didn't sleep for five days. I wanted to see what was going to happen. Can you see, I'm the sort of person that I, I always find out the hard so way. So you risk, this, that's a risking. And I was preparing for a bodybuilding competition. I'm like, if I stay awake for five days and I, don't go, to the, and I go to the gym while they are sleeping and I still eat whatnot, I'm going to get better results than them. Sure. But eventually the blood stops flowing in your brain. What about the... Yeah. And then there's one time, hey, I called my mom, like, mom, I'm not okay. Yeah. I went to a clinic in Alex. They saw my eyes were red. Yeah. They took me to a, a government hospital and I almost turned into a cabbage. I almost turned into a cabbage. I woke up in that hospital two weeks later mm. because I had what we call it an episode. I thought I was dead. So when I woke up, I was in a hospital bed. There's lots of people laying in the bed. I'm like, is this like an afterlife? There's someone laying down next to me. Now remember, I used to tell you about my anger. Then I'm like, who the F are you? Yeah. It's like, you've been here for the last two weeks. What, 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 what. I stood up, I was about to, hey, you know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> so that he ran out of the hospital. He needed to call the securities. And it got to a point where they needed to get like 14 security guys to like tie me down on a bed. Yeah. And then they sedated me. They took me out for two weeks. They injected me with something. I was gone down and out for two weeks. Again? Or it was... It is actually the episode made them put me down. They're like, this guy's crazy. So now they put me in a psychiatric ward with mentally disturbed people. So my family was visiting me all those days. I don't know. So obviously with the support of mom, support of family, whatnot, they bring the food, they bring the clothes, they bring all these things. So there's another guy, eventually when I wake up over time, I'm like, where am I? Like, hey man, you, you're stupid. I've been robbing you every day. Your parents, they what that they're leaving you all these things here. <laughs> I've been robbing you. Mm. And, and that was all because... <laughs> You, you decided not to sleep for four days. Well, I would say the life that I was living even before I went to to hospital, it was a sign that I was going fast in the wrong direction because during those times, this is the part of becoming famous oh, yeah. and the people that you attract, you, you don't know who you're attracting. You don't know who you're chilling with. You can be chilling with, with the people around you could be sinners. It doesn't mean you have to sin with them. But bad things can still happen to good people. Because the environment wins over time. Yeah. The car accident is a, is a byproduct of that. The hospital was mm -hmm. a after effect of that. Sure. You, you know what I'm saying? Now you're in a psychiatric ward with mentally disturbed people. If you're in a ward with mentally disturbed people, you will become who you're chilling with. Mm 
Mm. You get what I'm saying? But the mental fortitude, once again, and I started observing, why are they overdosing me with all these tablets in this hospital? Because they were scared of me. So they needed to weaken me. Mm. So there was one time I pretended as if I took my tablets and I didn't. And that day I started doing push-ups every day. Little did I know I was healing myself. Push-ups every day because I started remembering I was preparing for a bodybuilding competition. I'm like, even while I'm in this psychiatric ward and they're telling me I can't go out, I'm still going to get better results than everyone that can go to the gym. Can you see where my mind is and stuff now? I'm exercising every day. I'm like, yeah. I need to put on size. I'm taking everyone's food. I'm like, give me your bread. I'm mixing it with porridge. I'm exercising, I'm exercising, I'm exercising. And then my family came to visit. And in that day, I was speaking a lot of sense. They're like, I think this guy's okay. Mm. And stuff now. So what happened is I started realizing that students that are doing practicals mm. were experimenting with the medication they were overdosing me with. Mm. So if you don't have that strong body, the spiritual world, it's, it's, a, it's a different place. If you've been through what I've been through, survive what I've survived, overcome what I've overcome, that's why a lot of things don't really like scare me. It's like you get so traumatized that it's like, it's not that you are not emotional. You don't feel certain things. Yeah. You don't feel certain things. You try empathize. You are empathizing, but it's like, it's, yeah. you're not feeling it. So that just means I've got the capacity to handle a lot of stress. That means I can handle a lot of success because in the times when I was also making a lot of money, I didn't do the things that a lot of my friends were doing. Yes, we all make mistakes in life and yeah. stuff now. But for me, I was testing all the things that I knew were going to come my way. So it's not that it was even a mistake. The truth is, it's not a mistake. Yeah. Everyone knows what they're doing. Sure. Are you willing to take accountability? A mistake is only a mistake if you're not willing to change. Because you are mistaking something. Yeah. And if you repeat that, you're putting something into the universe where something bad's going to happen to you. So these things must happen. Sometimes you must get burnt sure. to have the wisdom and the trauma to know in another situation to have the energy to not repeat. Sure. So if you are a young guy and you are Mr goody two shoes you lack a lot of wisdom where the people that don't care about how smart you are can kind of like bully you around because in such, such in jail they don't care about how smart you are mm. you get what i'm saying yeah at school the guys that were banking they didn't care about how smart i was they cared that i respected myself and then they listened to me so when i speak people listen that means I can get a result. Become a person worth listening to. <laughs> I won't lie. So let's talk about finance. Obviously, as you grow and your business is successful, you know, money comes. Yeah. And we just touched it just a bit, but I want to understand deeply because there are people who've got actually working hard and they're getting this money, you know. I want to understand your convictions about money, the principle. You know, when you first get that money that comes, what is it that you do with it and why? Everyone, when they get money, yeah. they spend it before they invest it. I invest it before I spend it. So the moment the money hits my account, everything that I was thinking about, it goes to that first, then everything else. Yeah. When money hits your account, you got energy. Where are you spending your energy? On what's going to improve your life or what's going to disable you? Yeah. So you're either growing or you're disintegrating. You're either creating or disintegrating. Sure. For every action, there's a reaction. Sure. If you are spending and not investing, you are devaluing your time, you're devaluing your money. If you're not saving it to invest, if you're not investing in yourself, if you're not learning how to make the money that you made a lot quicker, how to build multiple streams of income, sure. you'll be chasing money your whole life and realize that you... At the end of the day, we're all going to make millions. But did you make it the smart way or the hard way? Yeah. And you can't live life long enough to make all the mistakes that everyone has made and still be successful. 
you avoid what everyone else is doing and learn from the people that made the mistakes and you don't repeat them so that you get better results to then create more efficient results and better systems for anyone that can avoid whatever I'm speaking about. So when I say to guys, sacrifice your 20s, it's because I'm enjoying my 30s now sure. because of everything I did in my 20s. Sure. 10-year plans. Most people are thinking too short term. I'm grateful for every sacrifice I've made, every weekend I've invested. All the parties uh, I've waited. I get invited to parties all the time. I've went to them and I thought maybe because I've got the money now it's going to be easy. Mm. I don't have enough battery for it. I can go party to celebrate success, but not just party to party. Sure. That's the difference. 80-20 rule. Sure. Yeah. You believe in income, in passive income and also um, active income. What are those things? And how do you apply that in your life? What is the practical ways to do those things? Remember I said everyone wants passive income. Yeah. But they don't want to make active income first. And then I said to you, I made slow money fast. Sure. Residual income or leveraged income mm -hmm. is about understanding that the money that you want, you collect it at the back end, not on the front end. You should not want a lot of money at the beginning and then prove yourself. You should prove yourself that you are eligible to be worth the amount of money that you want. Sure. So a lot of people, they're all speaking, I mean... When I say everyone's got uh, copy and paste language, oh, I, want to make, I want to make passive income. Sure. Everyone sounds all smart. But before you get to passive, you got to get the active right. What, what are the differences? Active income is money that you make from trading time for money. And passive income is income that you earn through building systems where you are benefiting 1% of either 100 people's efforts than 100% of your own effort. And we are creating a society that is so proud of everything is me, 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 me. I've got my business. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have 100% control of my business. Sure. My, 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 my. And it gets to a point where this is where I did it the opposite way. I would rather get to the top 1% of a $10 billion company than to have 100% of my 100,000 rand company. Because 1% mm. of a company that turns over $10 billion and you're in the top 1%, 1% of that means your business is a multi-million dollar business monthly and yearly. And a percentage of that is some of your income. Mm. So 1% of a billion it's still 10 million. Yeah. Most people don't realize that. But 100% of 100,000 is 100,000. Sure. So do you want 100% control or do you want to build equity? I decided to build equity and collaborate with a company that's got structures and systems with my personal brand and I create the business that I want to have and when this money comes, what assets am I going to build with that money because you're not financially free until the income from your investments can retire you, not the income from your hustle. That's only when you're financially free. I've got money, but I've not retired from my investments yet. It's how much money can you invest to be able to live on 1% interest of your investment so it's more like, Junior, how do you build a $10 million investment portfolio so that 1% of $10 million can pay you? I don't, I'm, I'm just doing the calculations in my head. Mm -hmm. But from that, you can, whatever it pays you, you didn't work for that money. Yeah. And if you didn't work for that money, you can't get taxed on that money. People only get taxed for money that they worked for. Lesson number one, from rich dad, poor dad. Mm. The rich don't work for money. They work for assets. And then the assets work for them. 
the poor and middle class work for money. And those are the people that are taxed at the highest rates. Mm. So there's a lot of self-education a lot of people are doing. Because why would they teach you how money works if it's profitable to make you not learn how it works? If you don't know how money works, you're going to keep on making the mistakes you're making. You're going to get in the debt that you're getting. You're going to buy the houses that you're not supposed to buy yet. And then those things then own you. The moment you miss your payments, you're still going to lose them. Someday, you will lose everything. This financial literacy, man, I mean, these are the things that obviously they don't teach us at school. And obviously you mentioned that you failed your matrix. So I didn't say you learned it from school. How did you cultivate the, the understanding of finance? <clears throat> well, already, like I said, when I was promoting for my dad's um, tavern, if I could call it that, I was already moving money around. I'd always negotiate with my mom. I'm like, mom, instead of giving me, instead of paying for my transport money, rather give me the money I'll walk to school. Sure. So can you see, I didn't want to be given things. Life is always about trade-offs. I'm like, mom, you're already spending this much money. Rather just give it to me and then I will walk to school. Then with this money, I'd buy myself sweets. Go mm. Then I go to school. I sell 100 licorice. I buy the box for 50 rand. I sell it, I make 100 rand. Then I'm like, oh, okay, let me sell two. I take two boxes. I go to school. I can only sell 120. I'm still left with 80. I call a friend of mine. I'm like, can you please take this box of 100? Sell everything by the end of the day. I'll give you 20%. I'll sell this. He goes that side of the school. I go this side of the school. I pay him 20 rand, but I leave the day with 180 rand. By myself, I could only make 120. But when I started building networks, yeah. I could make more. So I was building a distribution inside school. And that's what I was grateful for school for, because everyone had money at school. Everyone had tech money. Sure. You just needed to make sure that the people are selling inside the school. And then at the end of the day, you do the collecting. So I was making money every day. I could fund my own partying. I could put petrol in my dad's car before I got a license. I started going to the gym at 15, 16 years old with the learners. And because I was making my own money, you know the country that we live in, mm. even if the, the cops stop you. We live in an economic planet. But let's just say I could get myself to the gym. Yeah. I could get myself to the gym even though I did not have a license yet. Yeah. My dad used to get tired of fetching me from parties. He's like, let me teach you how to drive. Sure. So that I don't need to wake up midnight to fetch you. Sure. That's the part of life where if you can help someone become financially free, then God will show through his blessings. If you can help others learn how to do things themselves, not give them things. Mm -hmm. My dad taught me how to drive. After my dad taught me how to drive, I taught all my friends how to drive. Mm. But my dad enabled me. So can you see I started everything early? Yes. So the only difference between me and everyone else is that I started before everyone else. So sure. That's all. And I kind of feel like this business that you are in, it's your calling. Because it's been happening before. And then now I kind of feel like you have found your place. I mean, you're still doing the same thing that you were doing back then. That's why you're successful at, at, at what you're doing right now. 100%. Because just because I'm in business now does not mean I must stop the gym. Most people yes. go to the gym and then they start a business and stop going to the gym. <laughs> I'm just adding on on top of everything that I was doing before gym. Yes. It was gym first, social media, personal training brand, then the business. Then it's all of it. So life is about adding more responsibility, not sure. trying to get more by doing less life you will always have to give something in order to receive something let's touch now on nutrition and fitness because I, I i believe actually you say this and you said 80 20 rule to everything now let's focus now on nutrition you said you must eat 80 percent and 20 20 percent workout yeah can you please just touch just deeply on that as someone that has been exercising for maybe 18 years now, yeah. I realized you can't out-exercise a bad diet. 
So <laughs> when you're preparing for a bodybuilding competition, it's not who has the most intense workout that is going to win. Yeah. It is the person that is fueling their body because your body is working even if you're not exercising. Your body is metabolizing what you're eating. You are what you eat. Sure. So when you get the nutrition right, 80% of the results you're going to get is focusing on the eating, not the exercising. The exercising is a small percentage. Yes, you're going to get stronger. Sure. You want to build muscle. Sure. But high protein metabolizes, creates muscle. Muscle builds a stronger body. Muscle also has tremendous benefits long term with everything. You're just going to need strength for everything sure. and stuff now. So it's the 80 20 rule. I know when you messaged me earlier on today, yeah. you said I must come to your studio. Sure. I said, hey, I stopped in Alex. I'm buying myself a quarter. Yeah, and exactly. I'm sure you're laughing. And you're I like, how? Like, Which one is this one now? <laughs> exactly. Like, because he's speaking 80 20 sure. and stuff now. That's because the whole week I was eating healthy. And then when I eat gotas in front of everyone, that's my 20%. Mm. Most people are eating gotas every day. And that is their 80%. Mm. And then we, we live in a society now where people are normalizing bad things. Ish. And then complaining about good things. <laughs> it is like people look at you weird for eating healthy. You get what I'm saying? Sure. So... These are the sort of things that we all need to reverse sure. and stuff. Like that. And that's just the honest truth, yeah. you know, and it's when we can all look in the mirror and say, am I proud of myself? Do I like what I'm seeing? If I don't like what I'm seeing, what must I do mm. to solve it? Because someone else is not going to give me the power. It's not outside of me. It's inside of me. What's the first thing I need to do? I need to make a decision for things to change. I have to change. Yeah. For things to get better, I have to get better. I can't change destination overnight, but I can change the direction of where I'm going overnight. Sure. So there is my goal there, and I'm going there. So I can change direction, sure. but it's still going to take time to get there. Sure. That's what most people don't understand. Time. What, what is your eating like? Give me just... An example of your normal day because I'm trying to understand the 80% 20% workout 80% nutrition or what you eat and 20% workout. How, how, how much do you eat and how is your patterns like in terms of eating I eat three meals a day and two or three shakes before I started supplementing yeah. with the company that I'm with sure I used to eat six meals that I'd prep myself. Sure. Is that sustainable? Every day, meal prepping for yourself. Yes, it's possible, but it's hard. Sure. So nutrition and supplementing is important now because make sure you get the right nutrition, the right quality products. Sure. Because the foods that you are eating today are lacking in nutritional value. Sure. So all I did was have three meals, replace some of the meals with the shakes, so it become it became more convenient. Yes. And then the products made up for what I'm not getting in my regular diet because life is easy. If you're gonna lose weight, high protein, low carbs. If you're gonna gain weight, high carbs, high protein. Mm. But now that's in its simplest form. For immunity, sure. you're gonna need vitamins and minerals. Sure. So sometimes eating carbs and proteins only, like a bodybuilder, sometimes you just eat rice, chicken breast. Sure. Where are the vitamins? Exactly. So when you have something with a lot of vitamins, you're building immunity. Mm -hmm. There's this saying that if you do not use food as your medicine, you'll eventually have to use medicine as your food later. Mm -hmm. Life is always about opposites. So can you see I'm speaking about all different areas of your life? Yes. You're either repairing... Or you're preparing. <laughs> and I feel like I'm hungry. I just want to eat. Do they know about protein? Do they know about carbohydrates and, and, and those kind of things? They don't. So hence this podcast, because bro, we, we call people like you so that you can inform us. And I'm learning now about food because obviously 100%. I'm I'm part of your network, you know. Yeah. But before I never cared. I was just eating. 
proteins, fats, and, and, and carbohydrates. What, how important are these things in your, in your, in your body? If, if you can just touch on that a little bit. And what are proteins? What are fats? What are these things? You know, so that maybe at least people can know exactly. Because I know that you know things like rice, these are your carbohydrates and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so what are what what is these things? Okay, let me start by asking you this question. Sure. What's your dream car? My dream car is Mustang GT500. Hundred percent. Sure. What does that Mustang GT500 Shelby need in, in order to move from point A to point B and operate at its optimal level? Fuel service, you know, um, oil. Yeah, these are the things that I can think of right now. So let's say you've got that Mustang right now. Sure. And you go to the garage. Sure. Are you going to put diesel in the Mustang's engine? Nah, if it's not diesel, I'll, I'll put petrol, obviously. Okay, and if it's a petrol car? Yeah. Are you going to put unleaded 95 or unleaded 93? I'm going to put 95. Why? Because I feel like, uh, honestly, I don't know about the petrol types, but I prefer 95. I don't know uh, deeply about it. Even if you don't know deeply about it, yeah. you just know 95 is better than 93. Yes. Your body operates the exact same way. Sure. Your body needs fuel sure. in the forms of food, sure. vitamins, minerals, healthy fats, trace minerals, sure. fiber, all of those things. Sure. So most people don't realize that every day you already know how to take care of your Mustang. Sure. But most people don't want to take care of what they live in. They put in diesel in their car. They put in an letter 93 in their car. Where they live, they're not servicing. They're not getting enough fiber. They're not get, drinking enough water. They're not getting enough protein. They're not getting enough healthy fats. You need healthy fats. You need protein. Protein is an important building block of your entire body. Your body is made out of enzymes. Sure. And protein is good for your skin, your cartilage, your hair, your whole body, your skeleton, sure. your blood needs protein. So over time, people don't research the importance of health. Have you noticed our grandparents have back issues, sure. they wheelchair, they sure. can't walk? Sure. That is the result of a lack of nutrition and exercise over time because they were not meeting their daily nutritional needs that they needed to meet on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. We just eat pap. That means, you know, we have rice. My dad used to eat anything. Mm. Two liters of Coca-Cola every day. And then he became what he ate. He reaped what he sowed. Sure. R.I.P. Papa D. Sure. But diabetes, high blood pressure, high blood, weak kidneys, stage four cancer are all health related issues it all starts with people not eating correctly and if you are not going to be taught on nutrition i already know where your future is mm. nutrition you predicted actually by just looking this is why they want to weaken our society it is easier to control weaker people because guess who makes more money if you are sick where are you gonna go mm, most people. is it free no and then when you go there, what are they going to do? You're going to be charged, obviously. And then what else are they going to give you? Medications. And then that medication, is it for a while or is it forever? Forever. <laughs> for a while. So does that mean that all your money will be going towards your health later? Yeah. Then you lose your wealth. Ish. Oh, so now becoming is a system and a strategy to make you poor in a way because your health is your wealth. You're paying for your health. My mom comes out of retirement. She exhausts her pension, trying to save my dad. No amount of millions saved my dad. The money was still spent. My dad is still gone. Yes. There's no life to enjoy. Yes, bro. Then you I, lose the house. I, I just hope people take this serious, man. I, I'm taking it serious now, but I was obviously part of the people that never cared. But now... I'm building that. Uh, I'm trying to build the understanding, and I'm, I'm 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 still in the beginning stages. Let's talk about the systems and the structures of D. 
dealing with businesses, especially yeah. in this network marketing. Yes. Yeah. bro, this business is tough. I mean, from the distance, I can see Raya. What are some of the systems and the structures that you have implemented that are running your business without you having to, to burn up? Well, financial education, number one. Sure. It's a system. <laughs> Never work for money. Work to learn how to build the infrastructure. Once the infrastructure is built, the money should come in for free. If you build the systems and put people into the systems, the systems together with your personal growth will support your customers to follow the steps that you've put in place for them. Then you've got some sort of accountability because without accountability, there will be no responsibility. With no responsibility, there is no results. Sure. So me as a, a brand, I'm a coach, but now being where I am, I'm more of a mentor now. Sure. And as a mentor, I can only coach you if you're willing to listen to me. Sure. Don't have too many mentors. If you say that you only listen to me, and in 50 days I find out that you're listening to someone else, you have wasted my time on the time I invested in you because I already know what results you're going to get from following my plan. Sure. So you already show me that you're not a good student when you don't listen to me. Mm. And I can't help someone that does not want to listen. I don't want to help anyone that thinks they're in competition with me. Sure. I was a student to all the right mentors and I sure. paid my price to be able to do the exact same thing. Sure. Never outshine the master. Sure. I let, you, have the rule number, I think it's one. That, uh, 48 speak. laws of power sure. 100% I listen to people older than me I listen to my mom even if I've made more money than her Sure. with other areas of life not money Sure. my uncle, manhood sure. business I listen to him but most importantly Robert Kiyosaki and Grant Cardone sure. I study the right mentor anything else is a waste of time because they are always going to give me the diluted truth, not the real truth. A mentor tells you the exact thing you need to do. Exact. And if you don't do it, there's nothing that they can do. Took me a while to realize that for too long. That's my biggest mistake or lesson. So, how do I answer that question of yours? The systems. The are, systems. Yes, that you have so, implemented in the network marketing. Master business. the system that you are taught. You know, uh, we are part of the same network. Sure. I mastered a certain system until I could create my own. I created my own, mastered it. If you master it, it will take you to where I am. Sure. Then you're going to get to a point where you're going to do your own thing. Sure. And I know that day you, that's when you're going to decide, I don't need you. Sure. And I'll be happy for you. Because I'm not entitled to anyone. Sure, sure, sure. It's still going to be you that takes you to where you want to be. Sure. I can just give you the systems in the vehicle. It's your job to do the work. Sure. You get what I'm saying? And most people that avoid my systems are the ones that are not getting my results. And there is no one who has learned from me and has stopped learning from me and is doing better than me. I say that with confidence. Sure. There is no one yeah. that I've given a plan that has failed while they were listening to me. It all failed when they stopped listening. Mm. And then when you leave them to become who they want to be, sure. they have still not brought the results that they want to bring. And I cannot take responsibility for people that I cannot hold accountable. That's what you're going to learn as a mentor. And it's going to take someone... I respect someone that is coachable. Sure. There's a mentor of mine overseas. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me to ask that lady a question or a couple of questions. Sure. Everyone else around me is so smart that they, didn't, they do not want to be coachable enough to ask someone that is better than all of them the right questions. And I asked that person the question because she said everyone else around me has a psychological issue sure. because they are too proud to be students. Mm. And I asked certain questions. It's the only time she smiled. And she's like, I respect someone who is coachable. I respect people that listen to me. 
because I'm not playing with people's lives. Sure. I'm trying to help people. When they don't listen to me and I'm a serious person, I know that they don't take themselves yeah. seriously. So they're actually doing it to themselves, not me. And people think I've got attachment issues. I'm the least entitled person. For me, I grew up in a family that was rich in love. Mm. So there's nothing outside of what I've been given. I don't have any voids. You get what I'm saying? Sure. I grew up around celebrities, family members that are celebs. I've seen the fame, all of this. For me, I've sat on Mandela's lap. I've met politicians. I've met a lot of celebrities. Uh, anyone that I would be inspired by, let's say The Rock walks past me. Yeah. I'll just shake his hand. He's just a normal human being. For me, it doesn't get to me. Like, ah, I saw yeah. The Rock. What the? It, it, it doesn't. It's, it's like... I see you much respect on your achievements. I love the fact that you can handle this much fame. Sure. You work out what the, because he's not special. He's a normal human being. The president of the country is a normal human being. What makes him special? What powers does he have over you? He doesn't. Most people have given their power away because they're not learning. They're not reading. They are so in their own bed. Yeah. You know, I, I was one of the people that actually had a, a, so many misconceptions about network marketing as a business. You know, I always thought, ah, this thing is a pyramid scheme, ah, I'll get rich quick scheme kind of thing. And uh, there are so many in, uh, people in South Africa, even in the world, they still think the same thing. How can you correct that mis misconception or what can you say about that? What is a pyramid scheme? Sorry? What is a pyramid scheme? Uh, to be honest, I don't even know. That's how ignorant I actually was until I get to, to inform myself to understand. Because, I mean, we, we hear these names, obviously, and we attach the names to something that we don't even question ourselves. On. And that question is a very relevant question. I think everyone that is watching and still thinking that they should be able to answer. And if you know exactly what it is, then you won't ask me that question. You get what I'm saying? Sure. So when you do the right research sure. and you get the right answers, you're going to start realizing that life is a pyramid. Sure. <laughs> life is a pyramid, yeah. right? Sure. But an uh, actual pyramid scheme is a system that is designed that only passes money around, but there's no product moving in between. Mm, there's no product. There's okay. no pro it's just money. All right, now I see. Yeah. So, all right. Cool. So, yeah, no, go deeper on that. Uh, I, I, want, I want you to, to, to answer me, this misconception. A lot of people are doing this, and they still think, you know, you can never even change their mind. No, you can't. Remember, you said you can't change the world. Sure. But you can change yourself. Sure. There is going to be... Everything's going to have its misconceptions. Yeah. Every industry... As a permit and in every industry there are going to be people that do the wrong things in those industries yeah. sure. and then when you do something wrong bad news travels much quicker than yeah. good news negativity spreads so quick positivity does not yeah. lies has <laughs> speed the truth has stamina and over time, the truth will speak for itself. There are a lot of network marketing companies that are pyramid schemes. Sure. Your job and your responsibility is to find the proper company that is listed either in the stock market, sure. has a proper track record, sure. has people that are successful, sure. and you can see that their lives are real. Sure. And if you can see those results, you go ask those people, and if you can hear that they know what they are talking about, those are the people you can trust. Of course, the, the person that does not have results without doing the research is going to spread the negativity that, sure. hey, this thing's a pyramid scheme. Hey, 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 hey this, hey, 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 that. But life is a pyramid, my man. Sure. The corporate ladder is a pyramid. School is a pyramid. Church is a pyramid. Sure. Radio is a pyramid. Sure. YouTube is a pyramid. Sure. Everything's a pyramid. I don't know. <laughs> the only difference with network marketing is that you start at the bottom and then you can get yourself to the top. Sure. And you don't have to bring someone down to get to the top. So you're elevating with people. The more you can you only grow, get to the top as a representation of how many people you've helped 
make a lot of money. In network marketing, you get paid for the contributions you've made in other people's lives. How you make your money is more important than how much money you make. When I look at how much I earn, sure. I sleep peacefully at night knowing that someone's life improved, sure. someone got healthier, sure. someone got into shape, sure. someone bought from one of my distributors, sure. someone is saying, thank you, I lost weight. Sure. Thank you, my husband recognizes me again. Thank you for this opportunity I was drowning in debt. Thank you for this opportunity mm. I fixed my marriage. Thank you for this opportunity I'm a lot healthier. That is more valuable than money. That is the void yes. of spirituality. Sure. Not the money. Not the money. We all make him money. We all make him money. Bruh. You see, that's what I've, I've actually discovered myself. That network marketing is actually a process of developing yourself while you're developing others. And then money comes as a byproduct. Amen. Amen. Spot on. Hence why you can't change the world, you must change yourself. Because when you become the right person, you can then fulfill your calling. Sure. And that's when God will bless you because you become an asset to society. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be needed for a much bigger mission than just making money. Everyone that follows the blueprint of where they want to go in life is going to meet the right people that they need to be meeting at the right time we are all one yeah so even though i might be speaking to you we speaking to a lot of people at the same time sure. we're all going through a lot of trauma we all have problems no one's life is perfect don't fall for the social media bullshit sure it's a lie <laughs> it's true though. It's there lie. was once a time the real world was an escape from the internet now the internet, no, it's actually, there was once a time where the internet was an escape from the real world. Sure. Now the real world is an escape from the internet. I've been with you for the last three or four hours. Sure. I haven't been on my phone. I don't care. Sure. I don't care. Money's still being made. I'm not a slave to the money. The <laughs> money is a slave to me. I know opportunities are waiting for me as soon as I open my phone. I choose, am I going to handle those things or not? Am I going to convert those leads? So my systems that I'm building, lead generation system, customer conversion system, customer upgrading system, sure. and customer retention system, and then I repeat over and over and improve, and then you add more systems, more systems, more systems. So anyone right now sure. that is not building a social media brand sure. is committing financial suicide. Can you, can you say that directly to Anyone right now that is using social media and is not scaling their social media brand is committing financial suicide. Are you using social media or is social media using you? Because it was created to build networks. You know, when I booked a flight to come see you, sure. I decided, should I Uber or should I uh, rent a car? I rented a car, sure. switched on the radio, a radio is a frequency, right? Sure. I listen for five minutes. I'm hearing someone complaining. Telcom, I can't migrate, uh, what, 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 what. So I'm like, this is a frequency of people that want to complain. And they want to spread awareness of complaints. Complainers don't produce and producers don't complain. You have to... I can't wait for people to lose millions and still be okay. <laughs> I don't think we'll get there. You'll get there. It's, you should not complain because the money is fake anyway. It's fake anyway. Bro, I've made a proper life. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to speak the numbers. Sure. You get what I'm saying? Sure. It goes up, it goes down. It does not stop. I actually get happy when it goes down because it actually forces me to go back on what I'm supposed to do. Sure. The money makes you comfortable. Money is going to make you more of who you are. So I'm like, hey, if this money is going to punch me now, it's not going it, to, it, this money that I'm making now mm. is giving me a good life. And a good life comes at the sacrifice of a great life. So you must sacrifice your good life for your great life. I'm going through that process. I completed my life in my 20s 
And there's nothing more I could have done in my 20s than everything that I've done. I spent a lot of time alone. I've partied long enough. I've made the mistakes that I need to make. I've had a lot of the experiences to know what I don't want. Sure. And now that I know what I do want now, and I've become more complete, I'm so grateful for my partner. Sure. Yeah. Because that's the one person that was listening to me. Sure. <laughs> She's here. Yeah, no, 100%. Guys, she's here, sure. <laughs> yeah, because yes. now I'm, I'm spiritually pr protected. Remember when I told you I was mentoring a lot of people sure. and I ended up wasting my time, all of that and stuff now? Sure. She applied everything that I would say. She avoids my mistakes and gets better results. And when I find myself in the chain of habit of doing what I'm used to, she would always hit me with my own logic against me. And I'm like, Ish. You come back. I come back. Sure. I wake up. She hated social media. Sure. Yeah, I met her with a thousand followers. <laughs> but I was teaching her the business sure. that she was building. And she got the results that she wanted. But she didn't want social media. I'm like, unfortunately, you're going to have to use this thing as a tool. As a tool. She used it as a tool. Out of nowhere, 10,000 followers, 50,000 followers, 100,000 followers, 150,000 followers, Instagram, right? Sure. Started Facebook last year in May before we took our parents on vacation. We went to, to Thailand. Sure. So I took my mother-in-law, my mom, and my partner, sure. right? Sure. We went to Thailand, started a Facebook account. It had 198 followers. Guess how many followers it, it's got now, 10 months later? 300,000, Half a million. And, and, and some of them, they're, they're being part of the network now. She's, she has grown. She does not post the product that she sells. She's just being her authentic, authentic self. People are buying her, not the product. Being authentic pays. It pays. Because what better way to get paid than to be yourself? Jay, <laughs> so could, could it be that the reason why a lot of people are broke is because they are fake? Yeah, because now they are faking it till they make it, but they become the fake person that they are pretending to be. So they think their life is what's on social media, not what's in front of them. Sure. So you need to practice being authentic because true success is sharing your downs when you're down and you can share your highs when you're high because you can't just have it all as a highlight of the best things. Sure. Hence why, 2017, I went live at my dad's funeral sure. and I promised my mom I was going to retire her and I needed to go live for the people that couldn't attend my, my dad's funeral. And you shared on social media. I shared it on social media. And then I had a goal of buying a car in exactly one year. It was my dream car at that time. I got it in exactly one year. In 2018, I shot a commercial um, in the biggest estate in South Africa. Sure. I saw the houses there. I'm like, I'm going to stay here one year, one day. Exactly two years later, I stayed there. There's a car and cars I said I was going to buy. Sure. Got the place got all the dream cars, retired my mom, all in the same year. What kind of man do you need to be that is still able to live a comfortable life and you can still take your mom around the world, still take your woman around the world, take your mother-in-law around the world and take them on a vacation and just enjoy life? Bruh. Guys have not planned for those kind of things. That's why it's like, I'm not impressed by cars. The stuff that I've done, I don't see guys doing it. I don't see guys taking their parents overseas. I don't see them taking their partners overseas. Okay, they go there so in someone's office. And, and that's, that's what I want to talk about. Right? You, you define success. There are many people in South Africa who have high unemployment rate. It's yep. a problem. But we have a lot of graduates. Yeah. Sell or be sold. So look, it's sad. So look, it's sad. My mom's got two degrees. My sister's got a degree. I've got no degree. 
but I've got more money than both of them. What does that say? What what is the mystery or something that is hidden within that? Question everything. You know, even when I'm speaking, I'm not trying to offend anyone. Sure. Because people people are going to take my what I'm saying and perceive it the way they process things, not for what it is. Sure. I want everyone that's listening and watching this right now sure. to watch what I'm saying once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And then you'll understand it more. Sure. But you're going to get struck emotionally first. Remember, sure. if you can't control your emotions, sure. you can't control anything. Sure. <laughs> so once you get out of that emotion, like there's a lot of guys that are, were supposedly angry when I said, if you're making less than 100,000 rands, you can't afford a girlfriend. Sure. And I said it when I didn't have a girlfriend. Sure. It's just crazy. The time I actually hit six figures sure. in a month, sure. immediately that month is literally a, a month before I actually met my partner. So it's not like I was looking for it. It's somehow I really had a plan to get to this financial goal. Sure. And then by the time I'm at this financial goal, Things happen. I could already afford dates, flights, anything. Sure. Crazy how it works, eh? It's who I became, not the money that I made. Mm. Yeah. Because, bro, now I just hope, because uh, I'm trying to, the platform, this platform is about people. I want people to learn and to take, to take themselves out of their poverty situations mm. and suffering, man. How, how can one who's, a person who's watching and say, you know, I want to join a network marketing what, what sort of mindset and where do they start, you know, um, just for, for their advice sake? Maybe someone is looking, wow, I want to be like, I want to do what Junior did. Yes, I have a degree. I have all these kind of things. But now I want to try this thing out. I, I want to, 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 to do it. What, what, what should they do? What are the things that they should do? Well, number one, do your research. Sure. Spend time researching yourself, not asking your friends. Sure. When I was asking my friends, they all told me not to do it. Whatever everyone else is doing, do the opposite. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes when I'm looking to do something, depending on what they say. Sure. Like I remember, I'm going to go back to answering your question. Sure. Don't take financial advice from your mom. From your mom? She loves you too much. So she's always going to give you advice based on safety mm. and survival. But as a guy, you need to get burnt. Mm. So mm. I had my first convertible car. Sure. I then got my apartment. Sure. And I was able to still buy a four pipe at that time. Sure. But I was really content. I'm like, I finally moved out of my mom's house. Sure. I've already got this car. But this car was a ticking time bomb. It's breaking down every 30 days. You know, these sports cars, the, the one through five, sure. it was like, yo, <laughs> right? Sure. So I realized that that car actually kept me working because it caused so many problems that I needed to keep on making more yeah. money. But there's one time where I was like, I've replaced my turbo twice. I'm tired of my room scratching the tire on the inside and I'm running on run flats. One run flat is 5,000 rand, whatnot, whatnot. It's eating my money. Sure. And then there's one time my water pump broke. Sure. And then the top burnt, popped. I was driving and I was on a 90-day game plan. I just came back from France learning from my other mentors in 2019, in December. Sure. And then 2020, I said, I'm going to the top 1%. Sure. The moment you make a decision that you're going to hit a certain thing in your life, you're asking for problems first. So now I had a 90 day game plan. By that time, I already had built a network of 2,500 people in, within my network. Sure. I had a goal of getting to 10,000 that year. I had a 90 day game plan. I signed up 100 people in three months. And the first month, the car that I had just fixed broke down 
and it messed up my 90-day game plan. At that time, I had a December where it's the most money I'd ever made at that time. So. But within four or five days, somehow that money just disappeared. Because I had to fix the car. I'm partying. People are scamming me for accommodation. Uh, I'm not hitting my targets so. because I'm doing what everyone else is doing. So. I'm celebrating the success. I'm falling behind. I'm not building momentum in December. So. Now, Jan. Now, there's multiple streams of income in our so. business. Now, I wasn't eligible for one of my bonuses that month. So. And then I said to my mom, Mom, I'm tired of this car. Mm. What should I do? Because there's a car that I want to buy three months from now. Yeah. My mom said, buy a big aunt. Save money. <laughs> and it sounds like a very, very good advice, of course. I mean, and then you know how I process information? <laughs> sure. I'm like, Mom, you're right. Guess what I did? Sure. I bought an M4. <laughs> Immediately, without wasting time, I called the BMW dealership, sure. PE. I'm like, I see this M4 here. Mm -hmm. Is it available? They're like, yeah. I'm like, let me send you my financials. Sure. Within two hours, they say you can come pick up your car in two days. I called my friends, I booked them flights. Sure. I said, hey, I'm booking you flights. Why, why did you do that? Why did you go for Picanto? What was your mindset at that level? When you're focusing on saving money, you're focusing on protecting a little bit of what you've got. But with the mindset of making more money, you may, you're more focused on making more. Mm -hmm. So money you must use, you must not save. So... My process behind that was I can buy a sports car. I can pay a deposit. I'm not going to pay for two, three months. The amount of money that I'm going to be paying for this car with where I'm going to be in three months, it's already paid for by these multipliers that I'm going to earn in the business. By the time I needed to pay for the car, it, I was already making more money than before I had the car. So if I understand you, you're saying the next level unlocks the bigger problems, but the bigger problems makes you grow more. And the bigger problems are just preparing you for the other bigger problems. So there's no level of achievement that doesn't have any problems? Of course not. Your life <laughs> is about first solving your financial problems sure. because any other problem outside of finances will be because of money. So you solve that, but every other problem you're still going to have anyway. Mm -hmm. Just make sure sooner or later you've solved your money problems. Most people that actually don't have a money problem, they've got an income problem. You've got an income problem. People are making money too slow. Mm. Remember I said I made slow money fast? Sure. Because the people I started with, I had a goal to hit the top level within 10 years. I got there in three and a half years. I had a 10-year plan and I compressed it into three years because I did three times more meetings, three times more gym sessions, three times more activities, three mm -hmm. times more reading, three times less sleep, three times more doing, three times more recruiting, three, more multiplying, more contribution, more studying, more applying, more everything. Sure. And when I knew what it took in order to get there, I'm like, I feel sorry for anyone that says they want to get the results that I got. Because if you want to get the results I got in three and a half years, are you willing to lose your dad and not complain? Are you willing to lose your grandmother three months later and not be able to attend the funeral? Are you willing to handle your family complaining that you don't quite care about family because you're focused on your business? Are you willing to keep on making money and can't afford to cry because you still want to retire your mom and you're following a plan and you still become a top producer in the country? and in the region, and you become one of the fastest growing distributors, and you still achieve your goals. And the level of discipline and sacrifice there, you, you, it's like you're living in your own world. Everything is, it doesn't matter. Distractions, all these things. So would you say someone should be prepared for, to do such things to be successful in, in, in the network marketing business? In anything, because right now, I can make anything work. Network marketing is actually the best school to develop entrepreneurs. Damn. Because who I've become now, 
I'm grateful that I learned the business model and now I'm building my own systems. And with my own systems, I'm still becoming the entrepreneur and the brand that I was always supposed to be. But I was willing to sacrifice my fitness brand at the beginning to build my business, to come back to my fitness brand, but now scale it all around the world and build bigger systems even more because I want to become more omnipresent. I'm currently distributing in 31 countries, earning in multiple currencies. Most of our business now, we're earning more in dollars than rands. And we sleep midnight and then we wake up maybe around 10 a.m. Because with the systems we've built, our customers are taken care of in the morning while we are sleeping. We wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning where it's 5 a.m. in America. Two hours later, we do a workout with our overseas clients when it's the morning for them. And then already within the first two hours of the day, the workout's out the way, you've had your shakes, and then you enjoy the rest of the day with everyone else locally, but while you're building globally. And people still think that they can compete as, uh, with us when we are building networks all around the world, but people want to compete with us locally. <laughs> That's why I joined, and I kind of feel like I joined late, but I'm grateful that I'm part of it because I want to build myself. You know, uh, now I have understanding. And like I told you, I did a one year research. Yeah. Just, just information, just information. And I was like, okay, who can I look up to and talk to and ask? And and th that's the reason why you are here, bro. Yeah. Like more than anything, I, I'm learning from you. And yeah. if there's no one who's learning. Trust me, I've benefited a lot. Today. Yeah. So, tell me. Obviously, now you have other businesses, so you use network marketing as a vehicle to transport you to certain things, to certain ventures of the businesses. You've traveled, you've worked with, also build relationships. What is the importance of building relationships in this kind of business? And how do you do that effectively? Well, whatever industry you're in, sure. you must become the best in that industry. Sure. Become the odd person. Because that's the person that people listen to. Number one. Sure. Look at Cristiano Ronaldo. Sure. He is not a soccer player. He's more than a soccer player. Oh, yeah. He's not just a soccer player. He's a business within the business. Sure. His health is one aspect of his life. His discipline is another aspect of his life. Soccer is just his career. All the interviews and modeling things he does just gives him content to post on his social media. His social media makes him grow, grow an online brand. He grows an online brand and people reach out to him to post in collaboration with other brands because he's got a bigger reach. So, so you cannot buy Ronaldo. <laughs> it's too expensive. Even if the soccer team that he is part of doesn't pay him, it doesn't affect him. He's endorsed by so many things. He's one of the most famous people in the world. So that's the difference between a soccer player and a 1% soccer player. You can become a 1% soccer player. I'm a bodybuilder. Sure. I had to become a 1% in bodybuilding. I'm a network marketer. I needed to become a 1% in network marketing. But I'm more than a network marketer. Sure. You get what I'm saying? I'm a business within the business. My name is now a business. My name can open relationships for people. My name gets people to be taken seriously if they're associated with me. Sure. So this is the part where I'm saying, when you become the person that you never thought you could actually be, I know I've changed, but I don't see necessarily how people treat me. Sure. Because I'm always hard on myself. I don't feel special or anything like that. Sure. But when people are associated with you, Sometimes you could be giving the wrong people access to your network where they become so famous and they have not developed themselves yet where they get the fame without the misfortunes first. Then they think they've arrived through association, not necessarily through contribution. You get what I'm saying? Sure. So for me, this is why I always respect the people that have worked themselves to the top because I know what it takes. Yeah. A billionaire will never laugh at someone starting a business. Everyone else will laugh at someone starting a business. A bodybuilder will never laugh at someone that just started the gym. Your friends will laugh at you for starting the gym. Yeah. 
The moral of the story is, is the people that are laughing at you are projecting their own insecurities onto you. So, and then if you conform to that and you ask them for advice, you will become their advice if you listen to them. So if you want the right answer, don't ask everyone. Find a solution, then ask everyone. But understand that you must still work on the solution that you found, not what they said. Never work for validation. Validate yourself and get yourself to where you need to be. And then your results will validate you. Because that's the most important thing. You know, the, the saddest thing about life is kindness doesn't get you respected. But you should be happy because you're kind to yourself. And that's actually all that matters. Because some people actually love being mistreated. You know, you treat people well, they end up turning on you. But you then become hard on someone, then they actually respect and listen to you. Or they complain. So it's about finding that balance. But if you spend too much time with people that shouldn't be entitled to too much of your time, they don't look at you as the valuable person that you've become. Respect is earned. Trust is built over a lifetime and can be destroyed in seconds. I only trust based on wisdom. I don't trust words. Sure. I trust what I see. If you do me wrong, I have to see you differently. Because if I have already caught you doing something wrong and I see that you're obviously, obviously doing it to other people, yeah. that already means that I'm not exempt from this. And if I do not enforce a boundary, I'm enabling a relationship for mistreatment. So in life, it's always about having healthy boundaries. Don't be too nice to everyone. Sure. Be kind, not nice. Nice that... Be a good person. Sure. You know, I'm a good person. <laughs> sure. And you think because I'm a good person, I'm nice. But if I have to show you that I don't need you, I will show you. Sure. I'm no killer, but don't push me. Sure. Don't force me to do what I, I've already needed to accept my dad has died. Sure. The hardest things in my life, I've already overcome. Sure. <laughs> so even when people do you wrong, you forgive the person, not for them, for, for you. you. But... You learn to live with what they did and you just move on with it. Sure. That's all. That's all. <laughs> you don't forgive and forget. You forgive and then you just remember and you learn to live with it. It's just a lesson to learn sure. because even if they did it to you, they did it for you because if they could do it to you, sometimes it means that you were that gullible. Sure. Both people are both right. Yeah, it's like, okay, this person well. is weak. I can take advantage of them. They take advantage of you. That person is right. You don't enforce a boundary. They continue. Oh, huh? <laughs> hey, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because, right, dropping gems, you know, and, and I'm learning a lot because you can never stop learning. Yeah. You can read as many books as you can, man you always learn something new. Only if you open your heart to that. You know? mm. um, so I'm a good learner. I love learning from people. Hence, I started this podcast. I was telling you yeah. that I didn't start this podcast for any other reasons. It's not even about money. It's just me to honor people and learn from them. You understand? So you've shared so much wisdom. But for those who are already in the network, this may be my last question, already in the network marketing space, but they, they want to achieve the top 1%. What advice can you give them? Bro? Maybe they've been doing it, but, you know, some people fall off. They stop. They start with, you know, power and energy. Say, ah, now I'm going to get there. But obviously, because this is a process, they feel like, ah. what, what advice do you have? For them? The truth is, it's actually easy to get to the top 1%. It's staying at the top 1% that is actually hard. Because getting there sometimes could be your ability. Sure. But even a bad person can still get there. They've got the ability. Sure. Now, what's going to keep you there? Mm. The relationships you built. Sure. The character you've developed. Because that's going to speak sure. for you. Sure. And if you've got 
a good business with bad character. You're not really a one percenter. I wouldn't call that success. So is the character that you build, the relationship that you develop, and what else? Get wiser, get stronger, get better. Whenever you get to the top of the mountain, you're at the bottom of the top. Never think you've arrived. Keep learning. Your 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 money that you're making is someone else's toilet paper money. <laughs> There's always a bigger dog. I've met billionaires. I've seen such hectic numbers that I don't listen to anyone in South Africa. Honestly speaking, if there's someone that I do consider in South Africa, it would be Vusi Timbagoy. Honestly speaking. Sure. Because he's also been to some of our events. Sure. And um, his results speak for themselves. I've never really spoken to him. Sure. I just ran to him at the gym once. Sure. But he's got a proven concept and he, his confidence already just tells you, like, you don't get that confidence from nothing. You can't be confident without <laughs> you doing something. You, 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 can't, you can fake confidence, yeah. but confidence is not really loud. It's actually rooted inside mm. of you. And sometimes being confident is just keeping quiet because a lot of people are loud. So you can get tricked into <laughs> the loudness and stuff now. You know, they say... There's a reason why light mm. travels quicker than sound. Because sometimes when you hear someone speaking, you realize how damn they are. <laughs> I'm listening, I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. So even when you do question people mm. and you're getting people on a podcast, sure. sometimes you're not questioning them to take their advice. Remember, you're doing it for you. Sure. So sometimes I can guarantee you 90% of the episodes you're going to create does not have the information you're looking for. Sure. The truth of the honest matter is, and I can really foresee your podcast five years from now, sure. you're going to have the right people at your podcast five years from now where you are the higher level of yourself sure. where you're going to get the real answers. Because the truth is the mentors that you're looking for won't come to your podcast. Now. Now. Sure. Earn your stripes. Because mentors will charge you sure. a shitload of money. But, but I know why I came it. today. I, I know why I came today. Exactly. I know why I came today. There's a bigger purpose behind sure. behind this. You can see it. And I'm happy and I appreciate it, man. I mean, I don't downplay uh, honoring invite. My invite, everyone that comes here, bro. I always say, and especially you, man. You, you, you do it great. And I decided today, don't remind me, you must sign this to show that you was here. You know, you're the first to sign this to just honor you in your time. But I really appreciate that, man. And yeah, man, um, hey, bro, I think I, I, we spoke about it. Does anyone want to ask questions? Yeah, or? sure. Anyone behind the, 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 uh, the camps? Because I, I finished my list. And thanks. I think it's over two hours, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah, it's over two hours. And thank you so much for allowing... Because I needed to get this for me. I'm going to go back home and sit down and write. So, Junior, uh, please, can you, can you sign this thing for me? I really appreciate it. Um, let's use what color? Blue, right? There's no black here. Blue. As you know, um, this podcast is sponsored by Okta. You know, they're making it possible. But to be honest, I'll be very transparent with you. To do a podcast is not cheap. So um, when you get people like Okta who helps us to actually make this thing possible for your own learning, Mafetu, please do honor them. That's why I'm here saying thank, thank you to Okta. And if you want to trade Mafetu, Download the app, use the QR code there on the screen. Make sure that you click the link below just to 
use my code also support me they must see results okay this thing is working so that they can continue sponsoring us jay my brother amen one day i'll look back and i'll say this way i've got the wisdom look at me now you know today i've been covered and i'm <laughs> saying this uh, so that people can see i'm archiving this yeah but one day i'm gonna come here and take off my shirt and say it started I remember going to episode what what i spoke to to junior thank yeah. you so much my brother for coming and for honoring my invite man like you said uh many people obviously right now the vision speaks at the end you know now i just started oh, people like, ah, what is it time to do but you saw the vision you're like no you know what let me go support my brother let's try to do something and I honor that and also with your partner i'm sure she was like i'm gonna go with you and you know she's supporting also thank you so much for for coming guys i really appreciate you guys i want to thank you sure. because you're doing what most people aren't doing yeah. and you want to help people sure get information i know everything i spoke about sure they've never heard this kind of information exactly. and it's out there exactly. as you search social you'll find yeah. and i just hope that i'm an example of what's available out there because everything most of the stuff i searched i searched it online sure and then i applied so everyone's got the information thank you that i can't say thank you like it's just i'm overwhelmed because the wisdom you shared here but i'm gonna look 10 20 years later and i'm gonna say damn and 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 this is the beginning of change people are watching yeah people are listening some people we can blame them but they don't really have access to that information no 100 percent. i totally agree so if we do it put it out there it might touch someone's life and change it we don't know how many people were, uh, were impacted but we don't have to know no and you know because to. sometimes i know some people are going to get into a debate they're going to say no but junior comes from a rich family yeah. what not uh, <laughs> this advice is not applicable to to someone in the rural areas let me tell you Sure. I've met people in the rural areas that found a way to be a part of the opportunity that are at the top 1%. So we've got the advice for everyone with no money and can still get to the top. No one is exempt from this. Guys, no take one. this opportunity. You can't just sit at home and do nothing. Yeah. Trust me. Rather die trying. Yeah. Come and um, um, ask questions, read books. I mean... Do what you can. Perfect. In this Ramaphosa's economy, if you don't have any... St- one stream of income is not enough already. Even seven it, is not enough. <laughs> imagine seven is not enough. You don't even have one and you, you want to thrive. In fact, to survive. Thriving is another thing. It's to survive. Just to breathe. You can't. And just by the way, seven streams of income does not mean seven jobs. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. This, this is a bonus one. This because is a bonus one. I made the mistake of having seven different jobs and I confused multiple jobs with multiple streams. And then I made a lot of a little bit of money. So you were working seven jobs because that means you should be there. 100%. I was doing data capturing analysis. I was selling supplements on the side. I was doing part-time personal training. I was doing data capturing analysis. I was doing pro promotion. I was selling my own vests on the side. It was a disaster. I found a business model with seven streams of income. I've unlocked six out of the seven. So there's still another income stream that I need to unlock sure. as well. And then your new job after that is to create other systems. Obviously, I've got more than 10 streams of income. But my main cash cow sure. and the funder of my systems is my network marketing business. And I'm going to use this because it's going to deal with problems that every new human being that is born is still going to need to sort out. Sure. People are getting out of shape right now. Mm. People are getting unhealthy right now. Sure. So sooner or later, they're going to need the help anyway. Sure. So you are just putting it out there that whenever people need help, it is going to be available. So it already tells you long term, how does this business fail if it deals with what we all are going to have yeah. to work on? Health. Long term. This is the right time to actually join the business. Any time is the right time. This is the perfect time. Perfect, in yeah. these times right now, in this economic wave sure. that we're in currently at the moment. And it's not an economical thing. It's South Africa's psychology currently at the moment. There's no shortage of money. They are watching people loot in front of them. The biggest cash heist is happening right now. 
in the next 10 years, if no one uses this next 10 years, right, you're either going to stay in poverty forever or you're going to have that one chance to just make it right past to be in a different dimension. So you're either going to get poorer or you're going to save yourself and still have a chance to take control of your life. The next 10 years, time waits for no man. That's it. If you have an ear, you heard. This is not coming from me. It's coming from the man with results. If it was from me, you would say, I don't know, what do you know about this? I don't know anything. <laughs> Let's meet next week, my feet too. One last thing, sorry to, to sure. waste your time. You know, I want to send a special shout out, shout out. Sure. to Jason Noah. Sure. Because I've been watching him. He started at a young age. Mm-hmm. Um, FBK, because he just speaks the truth sure. and stuff now. FBK, you mean DJ Coach? DJ Coach. Shout out to DJ I know what he's doing. Sure. I've never met him. Sure. <laughs> but, um, I respect his I don't give a F attitude. Yeah. But now, when he says not having a six pack is important, <laughs> is I like... challenge you on that, my boy. <laughs> because we are all making money. So now, it's time 10 years from you. now, sure. you can't be eating whatever, my boy. We must have a sit down. Yeah, that's a good advice. He's, he's one of, I was with him yesterday, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He's only one of the class. I know, he's because, doing the most. I know, it's too much. Yeah. But um, now, I mean, you see, I, I, I'm going to the gym, my brother. I'm going to the <laughs> gym. I'm eating rice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's important, you yeah. know. It, it's it's something that we re- really have to start talking about because we can make all the monies that we want, but if you're not healthy, yeah, it's just a waste of effort and everything. Guys, thank you so much. I enjoyed this podcast. I enjoyed yep. this episode specifically. This is my best yeah. so far. I've done over 100, but this is my best. Give People must leave comments, their feedback. What was please, the highlight? Please comment. What you more know, do they want to hear? And subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe, my friends. This is for you. This is not for me. Never. It's, it's bigger than me. The vision is bigger than me. So let me next week, my friends, to start to first stream of income. Start learning how to trade there. There's a link. Hit this educational content within the Okta app. Learn, 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 learn. Do whatever that you can now, guys. Don't wait for, 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 for no man. Do whatever you can. Let's meet next week. We encourage, we entertain, and we educate. I'm out.